for more on what's happening in Europe or what's not happening in Europe, I'm joined live from San Francisco, Nicholas Economides, professor of economics, Stern School of Business at New York University. And he's a visiting professor at UC Berkeley, which is why he is there. Good to see you again, sir. Welcome back to the, to the big show. Um, earlier, I don't know if you uh, heard, we were talking about the European report that said that the, basically the Greeks are blaming other countries. Other countries meaning basically Germany for some of the problems that are in Greece. Do you think that it's fair for the Greeks to say, look, it's been a couple years of this. You guys were right. We spent too much money, but this is beginning to become a little bit unfair. Well, I think that we are at a point in which uh, the Greek uh, uh, budget has um, been balanced. And in fact, there is, um, there is a surplus. So a primary surplus if you exclude uh, uh, interest. So Greece is in pretty good shape financially at this point. In fact, it doesn't need any money right now from the European Union. And this negotiation that is happening right now is unique because it's the first time in years that Greece doesn't need the money right away. So what, needs, what Greece needs is to do more reforms, open, close professions, uh, allow for more competition in labor markets, allow for uh, things that should have happened e even if Greece was, had not borrowed too much. So the structural reform should be the first priority of the government and not cutting expenditure. You, you, you know what a lot of people are worried about is in the middle of the crisis when things were awful, and they needed the money. People gave them the money, and they got the change they wanted. They got the reforms they wanted. Now they don't really need the money that much. I'm not just talking about Greece. I'm talking about France. I'm talking about Italy. I'm talking about all these other countries in Southern Europe who, where things are starting to get a little bit better. There isn't that pressure to do the change or make the necessary reforms right now. Do you worry that perhaps without that pressure, things are going to go much slower than you would like? Well, that is something I do worry, uh, that there is not sufficient resolve in Greece, especially outside the government coalition. Uh, there is not enough resolve to actually uh, do the structural reforms. Uh, at the same time, I think the European Union should put as its priority to push the Greek government to do the structural reforms rather than asking the Greek government to cut more uh, of its budget. I mean, this doesn't make sense. If the right thing to do is the reforms, then the rest of Europe should also push for the reforms and not for something that doesn't really make so much sense anymore. The Swiss are calling for the banks, uh, particularly in their country, to have more a larger capital base. We see the economy getting a little bit better. What's next for Europe? What happened to the, the fiscal consolidation? What happened to this regulatory environment that there's going to be this one set of rules that all the countries have to abide by to avoid another disaster? Well, that's a great question. And I think that uh, this question should be uh, addressed by the top uh, leaders of the European Union, especially by France and Germany. Uh, we need to get to the point in which uh, the European Union will get to uh, a, most, a more close political consolidation and at the same time create rescue mechanisms, create the common economic policy mechanisms that can be applied to all European members, to all at least Eurozone members. That's kind of uh, the way that things should go. But again, I'm afraid that within Germany and within France, people consider themselves uh, first Germans and then Europeans, or first, first French and then Europeans. And therefore, there is not resolve from the large countries that there should be more political uh, consolidation, a common budget, uh, taxation, ways to raise money, and ways to put money aside in case uh, of a new crisis like the one of 2008 I, until I, today. I, I would say that's overly optimistic. I mean, here in this country, we can't get two sides to agree on anything, let alone 17 countries agree on probably what they have for dinner over there in Europe. But I want to bring in the question of the North versus South. I hate to do this, but the media has been talking about it. The northern countries, they do well. They have the energy. They have the natural resources. They're bringing a lot of money in terms of GDP. The South, a lot of retirees where the unemployment is very, very high. Obviously, the North subsidizes the South. At what point does the North say, you know what, enough is enough? Well, in fact, the North is not subsidizing the South in, Greece, I mean, in, in, in Europe, and that's kind of the biggest problem. While if you take the United States, uh, wealthy parts of the United States, like New York and California, do subsidize the, 
the, the poor ones like uh, Louisiana or Arkansas. This doesn't really happen in, in Europe. Uh, you don't get any transfers. And this is kind of the sticky point. This is where we're stuck. Uh, the European uh, rich countries like Germany um, are not willing to make any net transfers to the South. And that's where we're stuck. Uh, if that problem gets resolved, uh, then that's a huge leap forward for Europe. Nicholas Economides, uh, always good to have you on the show, coming to us live Thank from you, the Phil. great city of San Francisco. We will see you.